Let's do a double tap. I'm like a boss. All right, so we've got it loosely fished in there, and you can see the retention bracket is uh, slid down the pipe. We're going to have to adjust that, but it looks like it's going to be easier to get the back bolt in first and then adjust this one because nothing's really lining up just yet. Okay, so we're in the passenger side front wheel well, looking up at the block. You can see where the tube comes down from the head, but uh, one reason I want to start on the bottom is you can see you're going to get hung up on this ear. That's where the power steering pump goes in. The short bolt goes in that bottom hole, and the top bolt goes all the way through the power steering arm, but it goes through that little ear. Well, you can see where that's getting hung up on that banjo bolt tube. So that's why you want to come at this from the bottom to begin. So, Nicholas, are you going to help me? Yeah? You shy? You don't want to talk? No? <laughs> so what are we trying to accomplish here, Nick? We're trying to fix the car. We're not trying to fix the car. We are going to fix the car. Oh, yeah, we're going to fix All the right, car. All right, so here we are. Here's the subframe of the engine cradle. Okay, this is your sway bar. It comes across and it mounts down into this uh, ear that comes off. And this is almost smack in the way. But if we look past it, that... There we go. That's the banjo. Okay, and the right... Up there is our threaded portion from the block. So let's slowly zoom out. And you can see we've got almost a straight shot across the top of the um, sway bar. That's why we need the long extension. We're going to go all the way across there and shoot this gap. Underneath here. And there is the view from the bottom. All right, so in order to accomplish this, what I had to do was fish one arm through the wheel well side and come at it from the right. And my left hand had to reach up with the washer. I had to pass the banjo bolt through the banjo fitting on the tube and feed that washer onto the tail end of the threads of the bolt and then slowly feed that in. So there is a washer on the other side of that bolt. You can't see it. There's one on, on the bolt head side and there's one on the block side. They both must be on there. This will fail and leak like a sieve if you don't get the right amount of torque on these and get those to crush properly. This is a crush interference fit and it's as good a seal as you're going to get on a car. Okay, so I just snug that down by hand and if you look closely, let's get this to focus, you can see there is a standoff between the bolt head and the banjo fitting and that's because the washer is there and there's a standoff between the block and the banjo fitting because there's a washer there. There's actually a break between the two surfaces. That's what you want to see before you torque it down. I probably don't want to apply the torque just yet. I need some wiggle there to get the hose at the top fixed properly and to get that uh, tie down here slipped back where it's supposed to go. All right, so there's that bolt down strap. Um, I got it off of the corner so it wasn't binding because what we're gonna do is fish the bolt into the top get it started. Make sure there's a washer on each end. Again, this one has a clip washer, so it, you can't not have it that way. Right? This one, obviously, you can't undo it the right way. And then just line it up. Make sure the basket's on the end of the banjo bolt after you've cleaned it out, like so. And then fish it into the head. Again, this was the one that was on the bottom of the block, and it got rounded off. I've got a lot more uh, direct access to this, so I, I, I won't round it off. All right, we've got that finger tight now. All right, so that was just started by finger, but you can see the bracket's in place with the bolt in it. And I just need to get a wrench on there and just snug it up. You don't need to go to town on that. I mean. Long extension, universal joint, go above the sway bar. Okay, we've come through at the right angle. We're gonna get this. Sorry for the camera work. I'm trying to do this and film at the same time. We're just going to rotate this until we can get it. There we go. Now we're on. And you want to make sure you're on as solidly as possible. Now, you do see the angle there. You're not going to be able to hit this straight. There's a, it's impossible to hit this straight and be able to use a torque wrench. You're going to have to hit it from the best, shallowest angle possible. And the best way i found that is to go through the subframe. You can see we come all the way out here near the resonator. So you might want a 20 inch. I believe this is 24. 20 inch would be perfect. Okay, it'd be about here where my thumb is, about 20 inches. 
But what you can see I've done here is I've taken off the power steering pump and let it dangle. And if you scroll all the way up to the top there, you see that bolt just kind of hanging in there? That's one little thing I do. So I don't lose track of my bolts. I put them where they go. Um, so after I've taken it off, I just screw it in about two or three threads so it won't back itself out. And that's going to hold up the bracket that holds one of the power steering pump lines. So if you don't remove that, the power steering pump will not fall far enough away and will actually be in the way of this rear banjo bolt. So you're going to want to make sure you undo that line first, okay, and then undo these two bolts. Now, get a different angle here so you can see what I'm talking about. This ear sticking out of the block right there, okay, that's threaded on the inside. There's a long bolt that goes across the top of the power steering pump and it goes through that ear, okay. The power steering pump sits between there and there. So that bolt goes all the way across and threads into that, that ear uh, boss. There's a boss inside that ear. In fact, if I zoom in, you can see the threading on the inside of that. Okay, so that's what holds the power steering pump at the top between those two ears. And then that hole there corresponds with the bottom hole on the power steering pump there. So you've got this hole, my finger in here somewhere. Where is it? There we go. That hole there and that hole there. That's the top and that's the bottom. So you want to swing those two into place and then reach up there if you, if you have room to get the bracket. So what I would do is I would do the top bracket, get that back in first, and then you'll have a little bit of swing room and it's going to take some force. It's going to, you're going to probably have to pry it in there because the, the width of the bosses here on the power steering pump itself are the exact width between those two ears. So, um, but yeah, you can obviously see why you have to remove the power steering pump. It's right smack on the way of, the, of that banjo bolt. It cannot be undone without removing the power steering pump. If you have a 3.5 V6 with power steering, that's non-electric. They have electric power steering on uh, some models now, so that might actually not be in your way. You might have a clean shot at this without having to do this portion. But that's where the bolts go, and you have to access the bolts from the wheel well side and it has to be done through the power steering pump pulley cutouts. And uh, we'll go ahead and uh, get this bracket back up in place on that boss there. All right, so there's the bracket that we need to attach back. I just pulled the bolt out, got to reach up there. It's pretty far. Um, you got small arms or small hands, you should have no problems. You got large hands and large arms, you might, uh, might want to employ one of your kids or a friend that might have smaller, skinnier arms and hands. But uh, this bracket goes into that boss with that bolt. And you can see that's a hard line. And there's some soft portions of the line that come down into the pump and back into the rack. Those hard lines is why I allowed it to dangle. I wasn't too worried about it. The soft portions folded over and allowed the whole thing to dangle down. And it only dangled down about 6 to 8 inches. So I was not worried about tension. Again, power steering pump is very small and very light on these vehicles. Um, I have a men's small slash medium hand. You can see it's about the width of my palm. Um, but uh, then you can see where the ears line up. Okay, when you get that all into place, you see where that boss on the power steering pump goes into the ear off the block. And then you just fish your bolts through and tighten it up. All right, guys, that's not hard at all. What I did is I took the back of one of my hammers that has a, uh, a rubberized wooden handle and just laid it on the bottom right there and then from through it came out to about here through this window area here and you can see I can reach my hand up underneath there and touch this and just tapped it very lightly with a dead blow hammer I mean very very lightly and just tapped it into place in fact I over I went too far and had to come back with the pry bar again pry bar through here just touching this boss here and just pried back ever so slightly and everything just fell into line on the bottom. Again, the top bolt is the hardest to get in because it's so long and you got this you got this frame here in your way, okay? You see I can barely get a finger through there, all right? Um, so get the bottom one lined up and don't torque it down, get, get it get it snug so that you can still swivel this up into place so you're going to have to wiggle it back and forth to get things lined up. But you can see what I've done here. Let me zoom in. Okay. You see the boss is lined up with the ear 
and you can see the bolt is through it. I fished it through by hand and just got it just got the threading started. But that's all you need to get started. Alright, so here we are in the wheel well again. And uh again 14 millimeter bolts. This is the long bolt. It is gonna get impinged against the wheel well frame here and it's very very hard to see but there's a c-shaped cutout see that inside there i'm looking through the pulley here and there's a c-shaped cutout that goes around the hole in the power steering boss and right there that c-shaped cutout goes in and you gotta wiggle it you can see we're hung up on the frame okay there you go, you push it, give it a good amount of force up, it'll slide into its place. Now, if you can tighten that down, it means you got everything lined up. So what you want to do is go to the back side, underneath, have a, a 3 8 um, 14 on here with a swivel socket, and it's going to be very, very close to impinging on this rail. Do not, I repeat, do not be tempted when you're taking this out. Remember, we're doing this in reverse. When you're taking this out, do not be tempted to put a, a ratchet in there because you will not be able to get the ratchet out. I made that mistake trying to take it out. Had to get the bolt back in and put a swivel on it. You will back out the bolt to the point where you're impinging your, your ratchet against the rail here. Okay, Avoid that. Start with the universal and uh, get it on that bolt head and work it in. Alright, so there's our 14 then to a universal and then I went ahead and just used my long extension here. You see, see as you can see, we're well outside the wheel well here. I just start torquing down. And uh, when it stops, it means that everything's lined up on the other end. And you can tell whether it's advancing or not. And if you... All right, both bolts are in and secure. The top bolt there is against the block, which is good. Or should I say, the uh, that crescent-shaped housing. And then there's our bottom bolt, and it's against its fixture as well. So everything is lined up and well torqued down. All right, so I just liberally applied a lot of engine degreaser. So you'll see it's dripping wet. Some places it started to dry out already. So I want to get on that with some water and get that residue off of there as quickly as possible. I want to let this sit at least another five minutes. Just did it about two minutes ago. Hit everything from the top, came down here into the engine side with the passenger side wheel well. Got everything, make sure you got all the pulleys nice and clean. And got it underneath there where the power steering pump is. Subframe, okay, see it's just dripping off of there. And uh, running down the driveway here. But it's breaking that oil down nicely. So I'll get my water hose out here and uh, rinse this down really, really well. And then let it dry and I'll get the belt back on belt I need to decrease. I'll go do that while uh, this is sitting. Alright, so other than being oiled up pretty good, and you can see that cleaner does a fantastic job. It's uh, Purple Power, I think is what it's called. It's a concentrated cleaner. So, I think I'm done. Just need to get the hose out and hose this down. Alright, a couple of things before you get this belt on. You want to inspect the belt. And the way I do that is I turn it inside out so where the ribs are facing upward. And I just, I don't crush it all the way, but get a nice amount of pressure on it and just roll it in your fingers and look across the ribs and you're looking for any splitting or cracking at the peak there, at the apex of that, that turn. And uh, it's still rubbery and pliable and not splitting or cracking anywhere. So I do that to the inside and to the outside and I'm looking for splits, frays, cracks, any of that. Any excessive signs, replace it. And uh, there's absolutely no signs of wear on this belt whatsoever. As you can see, as I roll it here, no cracks, no splits, no frays, all the way across the entire belt. Right there, you see that in indention? You want to move that to the indention and then stick a piece of metal through there, and it'll hold it from coming back this way once the tension back out. All right? So when you go to compress it, again, it takes a 14. Almost everything on this job is a 14, 17, or 12. I've just got an old uh, bolt that's uh, a stud on the top and a bolt on the bottom. 
I'm not too worried about the threads digging into inside of that. I don't plan on replacing this belt that many times, so I don't care if it gets, uh, you know, the tension inside that spring housing uh, is going to put a good amount of tension on that ear, and it's going to leave impressions of this threading. I don't really care. Again, during the life of your car, you're probably going to replace this belt two to three times, so if at all. So just get your 14 on that, pry it, and then jab that through, and it'll retain it tensioned all the way. Right, I just thought of another tip I want to share with you guys. If you don't have a long enough uh, leverage point on that 14 box wrench to uh, tension it down, it, it's under quite a bit of tension. So as you go to push it down, you start to realize, wow, that's pretty heavy. I wish I could use some more leverage. Well, you, you want your bar all the way out here. In case you don't know, you can just take another one, another box wrench. It's closed. Take the closed end and feed it through like this and pry down. And you just doubled your leverage. Okay, and you see the hole on that ear lines up as I move it back, see? So tension it all the way you can and then shove that bolt down in there. I can't do that with the camera in this hand, so I'll come back when it's done. Alright, took all of uh, 30 seconds. Um, I had to go up one more notch on my box wrench to be able to get the full throw. But just working with those two wrenches was able to get enough throw to get this tensioned in here. You see this stuck it in. Now when the fish the belt on, when I'm done, I'll just apply a little bit more tension to this. Oops, sorry. Apply a little bit more tension on the tensioner and allow me to pull this out and just pull it right out. So now you should have enough leeway and lever, um, slack in your line to fish the, the belt through with no problem. part came with the uh, the double, the two-in-one uh, crush washer, and then two individual crush washers for the rear. All I did was swap the bolts out on that rear bolt that I started rounding off because of the 12-point socket. So if you're going to do this, do it with six-point sockets. Uh, those bolts are on there pretty tight, so when you go to take them off, because it requires that universal joint, um, any slippage on that universal is going to slip across the face of the bolt. and. Uh, it's gonna definitely chew up your bolt house or your bolt points, the points on the bolt. So, wow, car's running really, really strong. It feels great. So, no engine damage. Glad to report. And like I said, it only lost about two and a half quarts. It takes about 6.4 quarts. So, strong acceleration. Still running like a top. I mean, it's wow. Feels great. V6. Alright boys. That's all I got. Later.